from Chinese ice skater Ju Yi collapsing during her bit to American Nina O'Brien being swept up in a stretcher after toppling over during the women's giant slalom. We look at some of this year's mess ups and the biggest Winter Olympic fails ever. Keep watching to find out. First up, we have China's Ju Yi. After failing to land two different jumps and crashing into the wall in her debut show, the skater delivered an error riddled performance in the women's free skate the next day, earning a score in women's singles free skating with 91.41 points. It's safe to say it was an epic fail. After tripping two times during her latest Winter Olympics routine, China's talented American born figure skater Ju Yi burst into tears on the ice as online criticism of the young athlete grew. Ju received abuse on the Chinese social media platform Weibo after collapsing into a wall during the women's short program team competition. She admitted to making mistakes and hopes to improve. She explained that she broke down in tears because she was moved by the crowd's applause to soothe and motivate her, but she was also unhappy with her performance. Some web users admonished her for not being fluent in Chinese, while others rumored that she was only chosen for the Chinese team because of her family history. A high-scoring figure skater's performance requires beautiful movement and continuity between movements, which is difficult to achieve. Her motions in the game that led to her fall were not hard, but it is understandable for an Olympic debutante to mess up an even fall. Zhu, who was born in Los Angeles, won the women's amateur division title at the 2018 U.S. Figure Skating Championships in San Jose, California, before becoming a Chinese citizen the next year. Next up is USA's Nina O'Brien. O'Brien, 24, was racing at full speed and was only one gate away from the end of the race at the National Alpine Ski Center in Yangqing when she went off balance. She tripped over the gate and gripped her lower left leg, which was bent abnormally. After her team described her as alert and responsive, O'Brien was taken to an unknown location for evaluation and treatment, but her mind was fixed on the desk. Destination. She was apparently more concerned with delaying the race. 24-year-old O'Brien competed in her first Olympics this year. She is ranked 24th in the world in giant slalom and even won the U.S. championship last year. O'Brien finished 6th in the first giant slalom run, the finest of any American women. But her crash capped off a difficult day for the U.S. Alpine team. Schifrin, the undisputed Olympic GS champion, was unable to finish the first run, falling at the fifth gate and tumbling off the course. In the downhill, no American man reached the top 10. Slowly but surely, she's made making a comeback. Nina recently pushed out of the starting gates in Finland at the first World Cup races of the season, wrapping up one of two slalom runs just nine months after the accident and two months after easing down the kindest of hills for the first time. Great news so far. Now on to USA's Ryan Pivarota. Ryan Pivarota of the USA team crashes during his quarterfinal of the men's 1000 meter speed skating contest. When his skate got stuck vertically down, Pivarota faltered to the ice, then tried to get right back, only to fall again. When he rejoined the race, he was already one lap behind the leaders, too far back to catch up. All he could do was hope that everybody in front of them would also crash, allowing him to win regardless of how slowly they finished. In Pivarota's heat, only one person was disqualified. He came in fourth and had no choice but to put the wrap on his skates and scoot off the ice. His night was over. There are only so many opportunities at the Olympics, which makes what happened to the Americans all the more upsetting. After serving as an alternate in 2018, Pivarota had successfully made his first Olympic team. Pivarota's Olympics are over, having already competed in a mixed relay race where the U.S. finished eighth. Next up, Bodie Miller's 2006 Olympic fail. Bodie Miller nailed it a long time ago. He mentioned that he might not attend the Olympics, which he never did. Miller heard the phrases, did not finish, and whatever last call was in Italian the most during the Turin Games. After crossing an early gate in his first run, he swerved to the side of the slalom course and his alpine excursion was over. Miller finished only two of his five races here, finishing fifth and sixth place. The slalom course's sloppy snow threw off many good skiers, but Miller appeared clumsy and unsure on the first inch out from the starting gate. He took a shortcut down the hill to avert reporters at the bottom, but still an Associated Press reporter inevitably tracked him down and filed an account full of obnoxious defensive nonsense. He simply did it his own way. He noted that he is not a martyr or a do-gooder. He purely wanted to go out and rock, and he truly believes he did. He was most pleased that he could party and mingle at an Olympic level. Bodie Miller hadn't been a true Olympian since Salt Lake City, where he earned silver medals and completed 25th in the slalom 11 seconds behind the leader. Miller was in contention for the win after his first run, but he skipped a gate on the second. But Miller didn't just leave the hill. Out of regard for the Olympic experience, he climbed back uphill to make it to the gate. He wanted the whole package. Now, onto Tyler Walker's 2014 fail. In 2014, Tyler Walker participated in the Paralympics in Sochi, Russia. Walker was admitted to the hospital, but in high spirits, after crashing and being carried off the alpine skiing course at the Sochi Paralympics. In a terrible slip-up, the 27-year-old lost control during the seated downhill race, spun head over heels several times at high speed and fell unconscious on the snow before being taken to the hospital. According to his social media accounts, Walker had no recollection of the crash but did not break
break any bones, thankfully. Walker was supposed to compete in the Super G that day before his crash, but he didn't show up. Walker magically avoided breaking any bones in the crash that year, but he did experience a concussion and had to be flown back off the mountain. Jardine, a psychologist, said that he and Walker had a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations about how he's feeling and the transition back to race speeds the next season, as well as several discussions with other psychologists. He's still dabbling with what works best for mentally preparing himself to fly down slopes at the speed required for a medal. He'd say the fear is always present, but he manages it with relaxation exercises, visualizations, systemic meditation, and restricting his focus gradually throughout the day until he reaches the gate. He also keeps trying to substitute the fear with more positive feelings or even bad thoughts, believing that this will help the energy be more useful. Next, in 2006, Lindsay Jacob Ellis shows off and gets second place. This has to be the most embarrassing Olympic failure in history. Snowboard cross is a thrilling winter activity that pits competitors against one another in high-speed downhill runs. Yet for this athlete, fame was not the glory that they had wished for. Instead, it brought notoriety of unfortunate circumstances and forever changed their reputation. Jacob Ellis's name became associated with premature celebration when she tried a board grab in the dying minutes of the women's snowboard cross big final in Turin back in 2006, a move that famously cost her first place. At the 2006 competitions in Turin, Italy, she had an overpowering lead late in the snowboard cross final despite being only 20 years old. Jacob Ellis tumbled on the landing and was forced to settle for silver after attempting to have fun on the final jump with a method grab. Jacob Ellis was one of the best snowboard cross racers in the world, and she found herself in the lead by a seemingly impossible margin in the gold medal race. She was literally 10 seconds away from victory. It would have been an extremely easy gold medal, but she took a step back, read the situation, and then decided to show off by performing a mid-air grab on the second last jump and failed as she fell in the final straight, giving Switzerland's Tanja Frieden victory. Her Olympic career has been cursed for 16 since then. She's won 30 World Cups, 6 World Championship golds, and 10 more Winter X Games golds, making her the indisputable snowboard cross goat in terms of overall victories, but she was snake bitten on the most important stage of all. Lindsay Jacob Ellis managed to pull off the greatest flex in what could have been her last Olympic jump 16 years after a snowboat that could have haunted her for the rest of her career. When you talk about stories of persistence and strength in sports, you're usually dealing with very few years at most. It can be four years in extreme situations, but 16 years? That's amazing. And if you like redemption stories, Jacob Bellis's gold in Beijing is the best you could have hoped for. Which is your favorite fail? Let us know in the comments. That's all for today. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more.